What's Up Look Like Nostalgia Dave here with a review of The Bear Season 3 on FX and Hulu. The Bear, Emmy juggernaut at this point, one of the most popular shows in the history of FX and Hulu. Critically acclaimed, critically adored, and also a really prolific show. This show has shot and come out in three consecutive years with its three seasons. They shoot this show at the beginning of the year and release it at the end of June. It's very impressive from Christopher Storer and team. And I think at this point, there's been a lot said about what The Bear Season 3 is and isn't. And I'm going to get into all of that. I think there's a lot to dig into here across the season and the show as a whole. Right off the bat, I'd love to take this time to say that why is this show binge dropped? Just doesn't make any sense. I'll continue to say it. You know, I, mean, I don't know how FX found a way to release Clipped week to week, but they can't release The Bear week to week. It just doesn't make any sense. A show that's this deep and traumatic and layered and tough to watch at times. Yeah, binge it. Doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why they do this. Also, this show is kind of the poster child for why the Emmys need to rethink how they do things. And the old traditional way of comedy and drama is just not working anymore because the bear is being treated as if it's a comedy series because it's making episodes less than an hour. You know, it's half hour, half hour plus, right? It's kind of like the Atlanta quandary from before. But the bear is hardly comedic ever. You know, I think some of the funniest stuff was back in season one at this point. Not that there's not funny moments, but this is a heavy show and I don't know how anyone at the television academy in straight face you know this September can say yeah best comedy series the bear just doesn't make any sense but I think a lot is riding or was riding on season three because season two was so critically acclaimed so celebrated as a step up for the series which again had come out of nowhere to such critical acclaim when season one came out thinking back to season two with just kind of miracle episodes like forks the richie centric episode or Fishes, the huge flashback episode with all the cameos. Uh, the show really leveled up. And I think people know at this point, but it's not really a show about cooking. It's not really a show about being in a restaurant. This is a show about familial trauma. And I guess the closest you get to cooking is in terms of like creative obsession and how you motivate yourself. And yeah, I mean, it's really a show that is about the characters, as you say. The issue, if you can call it that, with The Bear Season 3 is that this is very much the setup for the final season. This is very much stretching of the final season into two seasons, so we get a lot of table setting with The Bear Season 3. A lot of the characters don't really make much progress in terms of development with this season. There's still a lot to like about The Bear Season 3, but unfortunately, the momentum feels like it's stalled just a little bit. Now, episode six, Napkins, the Tina-centric episode, fantastic. Right up there with the best episodes of The Bear. But overall, it feels like The Bear season three, all the plot is being saved for the final season, and we're just kind of getting refinement on characters and really honing in on who Carmi is, who Sydney is, and who Richie is. And I think we're going to get some really satisfying payoff, but that'll be next season. It wasn't really in this season which ends on a cliffhanger of sorts as well and i guess like the the pacing of season three and how it's clearly different from how the first two seasons were paced which were very frenetic and fast and stressful right like season three has a lot of stress but the pace is just so much slower that being said there's a lot to like about the bear season three it's still one of the best shows on tv easily it's still gonna make my top 10 shows of the year i think episode one is a great example of that episode one is something the bear really hasn't ever done before this is an episode all about Carmi, and it's really all within Carmi's head, about Carmi reflecting on the past, right? So we see these flashbacks in and around past scenes in the past two seasons, and take looking at them from different angles, or almost like deleted scene moments, extended moments, and it's all in the prism of Carmi's reflection, going back to his time at the French Laundry, the time when he... uh, we know he missed the funeral. We actually see that now he's sitting outside in the car. He just didn't go out to actually go to the funeral, but he drove all the way there. We see him get the phone call that Mikey killed himself. You see a lot of stuff there. And I think the way it's shot, the way it's framed, and it's almost like kind of dream logic-esque 
aesthetic. Like it's really impressive and unique. I think it's a really cool first episode. Episode two really, I think, starts to establish. It's not that it came out of nowhere. It had already been established, but really kind of hones in on like what kind of the conflicts with Karm are going to be, where this guy just is obsessed with making these never-ending menu adjustments and literally operating in a restaurant that will change its menu every day and the kind of stress that that'll enforce on its on the whole team, not to mention the consistency uh, standards will be challenged, to say the least, and currently pushing these non-negotiables, and I, I quite like that episode. Episode three begins with the uh, Marcus giving the eulogy speech at his mom's uh, funeral in the church, very matter-of-fact. And unfortunately, this is really the one big moment for Marcus as a character on season three. You know, Lionel Boyce, I think, really got to blossom in season two as Marcus. You know, think about the Copenhagen episode with Will Poulter, for example. But really, Marcus does not have a lot to do on this season. He has a few moments, a few cool conversations. I think a few with Sydney uh, stand out across the episodes. But ultimately, he's unfortunately a bit sidelined, you know, which I thought was a bit disappointing. Episode four, I love the idea of the food critic wall, uh, the pictures of all of them in the office as like, like the boogeyman kind of hanging over you. I enjoyed that. I forget exactly what episode it begins, but we get established early on that Sid has been offered a partnership uh, steak in the Bear restaurant. Yeah, you know, she's a DocuSign in her email ready to go. And, you know, she doesn't sign it the entire season because it's pretty obvious that she's not going to sign it after like the third, second or third time you see it brought up that she her indecision is, is there and the season really progresses to you know Carmi's status as the kind of problematic at times overbearing star chef and i think you know in the later episodes where sydney you know we see pre- uh, presented to us all the various writing about the bear and a lot of the really hyped up stuff is about you know the about star chef it's about Carmi brisato right despite the fact, and like Sydney as the number two is feeling unappreciated and at the same time also feeling like she's not included in the decision making in terms of the menu. Carmi's just not collaborative and he's also overbearing and he's tough to work for and the joy is hard to find. And I think those themes are really honed and developed throughout the season. Episode five, we get the uh, cameo from John Cena playing Sammy, a local friend who uh, helps out the bear uh, the one day. We also see Brian Koppelman's character, Computer, who is a friend or, or someone hired by Cicero to basically like, do the math and find ways to improve the budget of the bear in terms of, you know, stop being so picky about ingredients and get it using a vendor and making various decisions of that 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 regard i thought compliment was awesome as computer really worked and he comes back later in the season cena as sammy i thought worked because i just think cena is a really great comedic actor at this point i really enjoy his energy um him playing off maddie matheson's character neil um and i forget the other guy's name you know neil's buddy who uh kind of does all the handiwork at the bear it was kind of fun to have them chill and talk about haunting and stuff. And maybe it takes you out. Maybe it's too high profile. Maybe it's distracting in a season that doesn't have a lot of like pure plot momentum. But I think in a vacuum, it actually works. Episode four, we got, speaking of cameos, that's when Richie goes to see his ex-wife and the mother of his kid. And he meets uh, Frank, who is her new fiance. And he's played by Josh Hartnett, of all people. And I think... They actually have a really good scene together. And speaking of Hartnett, between Oppenheimer, a bear cameo, and he's about to star in M. Night Shyamalan's Trap uh, next month, the Hartnett Assance is, is with us. Episode 6, Napkins, clearly the highlight of the bear season 3. This is the Tina Center episode, learning how Tina came to work for the bear in its original iteration, uh, as we met her at the beginning of season 1. And she ends up having this really... Uh, well, you know, it's a whole, whole journey about her losing her job and struggling to find a new job as a woman in her mid-40s and kind of by happenstance comes to the bear and to eat and kind of breaks down uh, due to the struggle of this pursuit and then has a really amazing heart-to-heart with Mikey, with John Bernthal. And this episode is the John Bernthal 
flashback. Of course, the first flashback in season one was so effective because it was such a shock learning who was playing Carmen's now deceased brother. And of course, we see him in Fishes, which was such a flashpoint episode, as we know. And now to see him very much be in support of Tina, a character who hasn't gotten this kind of time before to this point, it just really speaks to, I think, the, the strengths of this show and what it's able to communicate. And it's just just a really fantastic, I think, uh, episode and that conversation that they have and really colors in stuff about Mikey as well, right, in terms of someone who feels like he was never going to be someone who got to chase his dreams. He felt like he was going to be skipped, right? Uh, I think it's really frank. It's really well done. And at the end of it, you're, like, really almost happy that Tina lost her job and came to the bear, obviously, right? It's a really, really wonderful episode, and it's directed by Iowa Debri as well. She did a great job with it. And I think at this point, you know, the episode, the episodes are kind of grab-baggy at the end, like episode 7, you know, again, Marcus pretty sideline, Richie struggling with motivation. You know, I think there's a lot coming home to roost next season when it comes to the Richie character. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. His stuff is less in your face in terms of like, we know Sydney's uh, struggle by the end, right? Like she's torn between staying with the bear and going with this new opportunity that's been presented to her that she hasn't committed to yet either. And, you know, she sees the, we, we think, you know, in that episode, that final episode party scene, you can, you feel like she's seeing the camaraderie and the, the benefits of staying with the bear. But then she also super stressed about working for Carmi. And also the lack of credit she seems to get when she works for him, things like that. So her struggle is pretty clear. Carmen's is also really obvious at this point, right? This is someone who's obviously been completely broken by Claire leaving him. Molly Gordon's still on the show. She has a few scenes, some flashback scenes as well. But he's really been subsumed by that loss. At the same time, he's a guy who has nothing going on in his life apart from his seemingly joyless pursuit of culinary perfection and that's really hammered home in that you know final episode where they go to the funeral where chef terry olivia coleman's character from season two is assigned to uh, close her restaurant uh, by choice uh, because she just kind of wants to stop cooking and do other things in her life and you just see how unsocial carmy really is around all these other chefs that a lot of them that he knows and has experience working with and things like that and you just see how kind of lost he is, right? Like it's how we're where it's, it's such, so, such so much is coming to a head in season four. And that's the thing that it doesn't happen in this season, even if we can pretty clearly see it. I think that episode with the, the funeral, as they call it, at Chef Terry's restaurant, really fun because they have a lot of uh, famous, like real life, like chefs and restaurateur types filling in the, uh, the, the scenes there. And, getting some lines like the the woman at milk bar for example uh stood out um and if you're really big in culinary those people probably stand out yet you get the confrontation between joel McHale's chef at the french laundry who was very abusive to carmy where carmy also picked up a lot of these bad habits but also at the same time got broken down by this guy and he basically says he didn't really know what else to say besides fuck you is pretty satisfying at the same time even if you know carmy doesn't really have uh gratification from the encounter i think the party episode at the end at sydney's new apartment's pretty fun even though you can clearly tell that she is pre- pretty struggling uh, pretty much pretty much still struggling with what to do and where to go and we have to wait until next year to see what happens with that and i think a lot of the feelings about season three will largely be colored in by our satisfaction with season four but i really do not have doubts about Christopher Storr's plan for the bear and I think it's pretty obvious that he he had, he had said himself that he had a three season plan in terms of plot and it's also pretty obvious now that FX asked for four seasons instead so it got stretched out and I think season four is going to be very satisfying so I really cannot wait for that and knowing how they work we'll probably get it in a year's time I, I think it also makes a lot of sense given that this show is one of the most significant star-making vehicles on TV in recent years. It's up there with Euphoria and Normal People in terms of the last five years, in terms of 
characters be uh, actors becoming stars on the show, specifically Jeremy Allen White, big turn Iron Claw last year, Io Debery and Bottom. She's being cast at tons of things now. I have most Baccarat cast as the thing in Fantastic Four coming up next year, right? Like the show is harder to make because the talent is obviously vast and uh, busy, right? Maddie Matheson, of course, very busy person as well. Not really an actor usually. So on the other hand, it seems like the show, because of its clout, because of its success, does not have a hard time uh, pulling in, uh, you know, cameos, high profile guests. I actually left out, of course, episode eight, uh, Ice Chips, which is when uh, Nat gives birth and we get the return of Jim Lee Curtis's character, uh, you know, Mrs. Prasada, the mom. I think that episode ultimately works and it's effective and partially because it's almost like redemptive to JLC's character, even at the same time, she is so grating. We understand why she's such a traumatic mother to uh, be raised by. Um, but yeah, you know, who knows who we'll see in the next season. And it seems like Will Poulter could be around for season four because he's like back in Chicago now as a character. So we'll see. Um, definitely looking forward to those surprises. They are pretty fun. And we know there's a lot of kind of cliffhanger elements, right? Like Cicero and Computer basically alluding to the fact that the bear probably can't continue um, until it start, unless it's about to start making money. Like, it's just not tenable anymore. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, can't wait. Let me know. What do you think of the bear season three? I mean, it's certainly almost uni- universally viewed now as the least successful season of the bear. But at the same time, I think it's still a really great show. So. Let me know what you think about it. And for more TV reviews, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.